Hey, g'day folks, it's me back again with another video. And today we are going to have a look at the stove brazier. Okay, so this is the first stove I've had on the channel. Uh, so let's take a look at it and well, give you my overall impressions. So once again, I bought this just for the purpose of making a video. Uh, I paid 100 euros for it. It's, it's let's say, in 90% new condition. There's just one minor, tiny little just scratch uh, and a little bit of um, traces of use on the lid but uh, it's uh, otherwise it's really in excellent condition if you're interested uh, I'm happy to sell it to you for the same price of 100 euros okay so let's get that out of the way so in terms of the product range um, so let's have a look at that first these come in 24 to 28 centimeter models so 24 and 28 that's what I can see from the European website and the European retailers and the price, the new retail price for this, well, not the retail price, but the price new for this is anywhere between 190 to around, let's say 210, 220 euros, depending on where you, where you buy it from. So let's say about 200 euros, okay. So first of all, as usual, let's go through some specifications. Uh, the volume is 3.7 liters, so 3.7. Uh, the weight is five kilograms. And out of that 5 kilograms, the pan accounts for 3.2 kilograms and the lid is 1.8 kilograms. Okay, so this is on my scale that I weigh myself on, so let's say give or take 100 grams or so. Uh, the diameter, the inner diameter is uh, exactly 28. And the edge to edge outer diameter is, let's say, 20, about 29 centimeters. Okay, edge to edge. Uh, the cooking diameter is uh, about 23 or 23 and a half to be generous, uh, which is actually exactly the same as my 28 centimeter liquid Dutch oven. Okay. And the bottom diameter, so the part that's in contact with your hob, is also uh, 23 and a, uh, 23, yeah, let's say 23 centimeters. Okay. Uh, the height of the vessel. It's not really important, but the height of the vessel is eight centimeters, and the length from handle to handle is thirty-five and a half centimeters. Okay, so that is for the uh, basic specifications of the pan. Now, I was interested to do a, a temperature distribution test just to see how this performs on my electric hob and how this compares uh, with my Le Creuset 28 centimeter Dutch oven. So uh, let's have a look at it now. Okay, so here is the result of the temperature distribution test between stove and Le Creuset. Now, I was uh, not expecting one to perform any different to the other, to be honest, because cast iron is cast iron. So I was really kind of expecting the same result. And that's well, pretty much what I got. Um, you could say, if we look at here in the table, uh, you can see that the temperature difference between the edge and the center of the liquid site is a little bit smaller than the stove, but not significantly so. So I wouldn't really worry about that uh, on average 10 degrees or so. Um, but at the end, the liquid site did perform better than the stove. Um, that's, there's a noticeable difference uh, if we look at these last three rows. Uh, the temperature diff of the liquid side between the center and the edge, um, they definitely converged better than the stove. Okay, um, but again, it's not really a significant difference. Uh, it's not significant significant enough for me to say, yeah, the liquid side is much, much better than the stove. Uh, but one thing that may be more significant is if we look at the temperature, center temperature versus time, uh, the stove cooks a little bit faster than the liquid side. Okay, so that means there is more thermal mass at the bottom of the liquid than there is at the bottom of the stove. And the difference here is approx approximately 30 seconds. So for the first half of the experiment, they well, they kind of heat up at the same rate, but the difference is a bit more clear. In the second half, um, especially around this, this area, uh, where it's approaching around 200 degrees. So you could say that the stove once uh, once again, sorry, the liquid say once again has a little bit more thermal mass than the stove uh, at, the, at the bottom. And once again, this result with the liquid say and the stove, it kind of dispels the myth of cast iron um, being able to 
been the best at retaining heat. If you check out some of my other videos, you'll see that the Le Creuset actually cooks at around the same rate as my uh, Demela Industry 5, uh, which is a five ply stainless steel pan. And um, so they actually cook at the same rate. And if, if we compare that to uh, to my Atlantis, the Mela Atlantis or the Mela Apollo, and the fit or the Fistler that I will show you in a sec, uh, they actually cook slower than the Licorice, even though the Licorice is cast uh, cast iron. So don't um, so don't just believe that if it's cast iron, it's always going to be the best at retaining heat. Okay, so that is really not always the case. So now let's move on to. Uh, well, some of the things that I dislike about this pen, and we'll do a quick comparison with the Le Creuset, physical comparison, and we'll finish up with a summary. All right, back to the pen itself. Now, what do I dislike about the pen? Well, there are a couple of things. Now, the first dislike is this lid. Now, I think this lid is too small. Um, when you put the lid on the pen, it's exactly the same diameter as the pen itself which means if you move the lid like this sideways you can actually see a gap uh, between the lid and the edge of the pen right so it's a small gap but it's a gap it's quite noticeable so to me that looks pretty ugly uh, so i think yeah that maybe sh yeah better design to de a better attention to detail was needed there uh, now this second problem which is even bigger problem i think is the lid it doesn't fit that securely on the pan, okay? So I'll, so I'll show you what I mean. If you tilt the pan, and if you're just a little bit rough, the lid can easily slide off. Um, well, it's not happening now, but if you just give it a little push, the lid easily slides off like that, um, because I think this is just not uh, high enough. So, so you really gotta be careful when you're holding the pan like this, do not tilt the pan because you don't want the lid sliding off and dropping onto your floor. Okay, so that's not a that's not a good thing to happen. So definitely be careful with that lid. Now the second dislike with this pan is well, I mean it's a design choice by Stove, but I'm not a fan of the black interior. Okay, so I prefer I prefer to have a light colored interior like my Le Creuset, so that I can see the browning or the progress of my cooking easier than the black interior. Okay, so that's a couple of things that I dislike about it. And uh, now let's do a little comparison with uh, with the Le Creuset. Uh, so first of all, in terms of cooking, uh, you are not really going not going to notice the difference. Okay, so uh, getting a soap and a Le Creuset, I think they are both going to uh, work really well for you. Uh, and it just comes down to personal preferences. So the, I already mentioned that my preference is for light colored interior, so I would be going with the Le Creuset just because of the white interior. I'll show you now. Okay. Light colored interior on the Le Creuset. Uh, another reason that um, I would go with the Le Creuset is uh, the handle on the Le Creuset is more comfortable. So the handle on the stove is very functional, but it is a bit sharper than the Le Creuset. Um, the handle on the Le Creuset is very wide, it's very loopy. So here I feel like I've got a more comfortable grip. Okay. And another reason that you might want to go with the Le Creuset is again just a personal preference is that uh, the stove, uh, they do not call me the same range of very vibrant colors as the Le Creuset. So in the Le Creuset you get a lot of very pretty vibrant colors. Uh, obviously it makes no difference to your cooking but it's just you know if you wanted to look pretty uh, the colors on the stove they are much more uh, conservative let's say so stove is I guess going with a different um, uh, philosophy there <laughs> okay and lastly uh, just do a quick summary now so and the summary is well do I recommend this pen um, would I would I tell you to go out and spend 200 euros on this pen well uh, probably not uh, and um, or in other words it's 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 not my it's not my first choice okay uh, and I'll tell you why um, I, I just feel that this is a little bit small limited um, this the, the a pen in this form factor so my first choice uh, for this type of pen would actually 
be my Fistler Rondeau. Now this is my 28 centimeter Fistler Rondeau, uh, also 28 in diameter. So there are two things that this pen does better than this pen. And also compared to the Licorice Eye Brazer, uh, I'll put a picture here right now. So the Fistler being 28 diameters, you get almost 28 diameters of cooking surface. So you get a much bigger cooking surface. You get a little bit more depth with this pen. And the best thing about this pen is that um, it's got a very, very thick aluminum bottom. Uh, so the heat retention here on the bottom is, I haven't calculated it, but just to estimate, it's more than double of the heat retention you get at the bottom of the stove or even the liquor same. Uh, even though these are cast iron, this is uh, stainless or aluminum. Okay. So this will be my first alternative. Uh, first choice, not alternative, first choice over the Fistler. Now my second choice over the Fistler, as, uh, sorry, my second choice over the stove, as I've already shown you, is a uh, 30 centimeter Licorice low casserole. Okay, so this is not the typical Dutch oven. This is the low version of the Dutch oven. Uh, but they, these, they do not come in 28 centimeters. Uh, they come in 20.30, that's as far as I can see. And once again, you get a bigger bottom cooking surface. Let's just measure that. So here you get about 26 centimeters of cooking surface and you get a lot more depth. Okay, But of course, if you don't need a vessel in that size, uh, this is still going to be a good, uh, good choice. So overall, my impressions with the stove, it's, well, it's, yeah, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Um, I, I would like to try a stove Dutch oven, the proper Dutch oven. Uh, it's just with this particular model, uh, I think there are better alternatives out there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of the video. I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter, um, but um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.